All right. Our first question is from JJ, JJD101717. What is the relationship between strength and endurance? Are they inversely related? Would it be possible to train both? Yeah, great question. Not inversely, though. Somewhat. They're somewhat. So here's They're why. They're conflicting goals. They yeah. can be, and here's why. So think to yourself what kind of uh, physical adaptations would occur to maximize strength versus the types of physical uh, adaptations that would need to occur for endurance and compare the two. So let's talk about strength for a second. For strength, you're going to want a central nervous system that fires – uh, forcefully um, and completely. So it's the C- CNS is like the electrical outlet. Like you plug it in, you get the juice. Boom! You want good, strong juice coming out, quick and hard, quick and hard from the CNS to give you lots of strength, or just 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 a good solid signal. As far as the physical adaptations, bigger muscle fibers contract harder, so you're gonna want bigger muscles. This is why training for strength produces bigger muscles than training for endurance. Mm -hmm. Um, You don't need to worry so much about energy uh, efficiency because... um, They're usually in bursts. Well, yeah, you're not... Short bursts. Yeah, you're not doing strength for long, long periods of time. Although you are improving your energy efficiency when it comes to the short bursts, your body will learn to produce the fast types of energy faster, uh, like uh, ATP, right? Mm -hmm. ATP is that explosive energy. So your body will become more efficient at producing that. Um, you may, your body may be able to store more ATP as you train for strength. That also means your muscle fibers get bigger. So overall, bigger muscles, louder central nervous system um, signal. Those are the adaptations. Now let's go to endurance. For endurance, you need a muscle that can contract, not very forcefully, but one that can contract for long periods of time. You you need energy efficiency in the term of uh, in terms of the type of energy that you're going to be using for that type of contraction, which is glycogen um, and fatty acids. A big muscle, not a good thing. A big muscle, it, just like an engine for a car, a bigger engine will produce more power, but will also use up more energy and gas. So for endurance, you want smaller muscles. Yeah, you want to be economical. Yeah, you want smaller muscles. Yeah that are energy efficient, that can contract, not forcefully, but consistently over long periods of time. Now, that being said, it doesn't mean that these both don't also contribute to each other. Sure. You can train just for endurance and actually get some strength. Mm -hmm. And you can train just for strength and get some endurance. So it's not, that's what I meant by, I don't think uh, inversely related is- is, is, If you push- Because there's carryover If you push them to the extremes, they are though, right? Like if I'm pushing strength to the absolute max extreme- then if I train for endurance, I'll probably take away some strength right? and vice versa. So that's where they become. And so here's the thing with the body. The body has to make a compromise. Mm-hmm. So if you're asking your body for all these different types of adaptations, and the way you ask your body is through your workouts, right? Through your workouts on lifestyle and diet, you're sending the signal, this is what I want. I want more strength. I want more endurance. I want more whatever. When you're sending your body all these different signals, your body has to make a compromise. I need a car that is both explosive off, off the line, zero to 60, but I also need a car that can travel for a thousand miles without having to get a new tank of gas. What right. you're going to get is something in the middle, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is why <clears throat> hybrid when, training. When I recommend how to train this way, I, I I typically want to nail down the person to give me one of them a little bit more important than the other. So I want to get that from them. Like if you said to yeah. me, like, "Oh, I want both." Okay, that's okay. We can agree that we want both. But is there one that's a little more important than the other for you? Yeah. And then we're going to prioritize your programming that way. Totally. So, and I, the, the split's going to look something like this, where 60% of your training is focused on one, at least 60 to 70% is focused on one, and then the other 30%. So if we were to look at it like days, it would be three days, if I cared about strength more than anything else, three days a week, I am training strength focus, and then maybe one or two days a week, I'm incorporating some sort of endurance training in there. Yeah, and this is too, like when I start looking into different sports that I have to really understand the athlete and what their desired outcome is in terms of like what attribute they're trying to build up more, like for like a soccer player, a rugby player, something like that, where it's sort of a hybrid of both, mainly like a rugby player, right? Because you have to be explosive, but also you're constantly running and, and being like efficient with your energy. 
So, you know, what position do you play? Right. Like, are you all, like all on the outside where you're just running constantly? And, uh, you know, you, you need to really focus a little more on the endurance end of it. Are you really explosive and, you know, the go to guy out of a scrum to, to go right up and try and score? And like, so just as a coach uh, to get a little more insight on uh, those specific things, you can train for both. It's just going to take away uh, a little bit from both ends of that spectrum. Right? Uh, absolutely. So can consider that for yourself. Which one do you want more? Do you want to be extreme in one or the other? And then here's the final thing. They can both be a detriment to the other in the sense that if your strength is so bad, let's say you have terrible strength, you're very, very weak, your endurance will suffer also. So even if you're looking for maximum endurance, you have to have a certain baseline of strength in order to perform that endurance. And if your endurance is so terrible that you can't even perform your fi- your feats of strength, then the, then the endurance, the lack of endurance, is taken away from your strength. So that's the other thing to consider. So I know I know for me as a lifter, somebody who's always interested in lifting weights and building muscle and getting strong, I remember years ago my cardiovascular endurance was so bad that I would get on a stationary bike and in ten minutes I would be breathing hard. So I started training my endurance a little bit and I got stronger as a result. But it was because my endurance was so bad that it was holding me back. This is why I run my occasional mile, just to kind of get a pulse on that. Mm -hmm. I'll run a mile and see how tough a mile is for me at whatever pace on the treadmill. And if it's something that I haven't done in months and I'm suffering from it, Mm -hmm. I'll kind of pick it up where I'm doing it one time a week or so, which is what I'm doing right now because I just recently did that and I was gassed when I was doing it. I was like, oh shit, okay. This is probably even affecting my weight training. I'd probably be getting better lifts Mm -hmm. if I had a little bit more endurance. So all I do is now... You know, once a week, I'll start my workout with after I do my mobility work, I go right over to the treadmill, I do my mile, I try and push my intensity on it, see if I can improve on my time, and then I go into my training program. And so that kind of keeps that at that level to your point. So, 